The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning session. My name is Mr. Mbang Gabriel, a geography teacher. Last class you had a lesson on the storm hydrograph. Today you were given an assignment and we're going to see what was the assignment. What are the factors that affect the shapes of storm hydrograph and lag time? What are the factors that affect the shapes of storm hydrograph and lag time? Correction. Static or catchment factors, wherein we have the basin slope or gradient, basin size and shape, basin's geology, the vegetation cover, drainage density, and dynamic factors or transient factors, which englobe the climate, especially precipitation, and land use, that is, man's activities. Our lesson of today, lesson 29, is factors affecting the shapes of storm hydrographs and land time. The factors affecting shapes of storm hydrographs and land time. The lesson overview goes this way. We shall pay attention to lesson objectives, previous knowledge, real life situation like in your community what can happen, lesson activities, exercises and an assignment. We are going to pay attention to our lesson objectives, previous knowledge, real life situation, lesson activities, exercises and an assignment. Our lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, the learners you're supposed to be able to identify and explain the factors affecting the shape of the storm hydrograph and lag time. The factors affecting the shape of the storm hydrograph and lag time should be able to identify and explain these factors at the end of the lesson. Our previous knowledge. We had knowledge on notions of channel runoff, that is, the various streams that run off into a main discharge. The meaning, types, and significance of a storm hydrograph. We saw what is the meaning of the storm hydrograph the three main types of storm hydrographs and its significance or its importance. So let us define the channel runoff and the storm hydrograph. The channel runoff, as we simply said, is the various streams that run off after the water has fallen, that is after rainfall. And the storm hydrograph is simply the relationship between the rainfall and the time that it takes for a peak to be attained. The types of storm hydrograph simply are the flashy or the peak, the subdued, and lastly, the double type of storm hydrograph. And its significance or its importance lies in the fact that 
It helps stakeholders and community leaders to take decisions concerning flood prediction and the resettling of citizens in their community. Our real life situation. In the community where you live, all the forest vegetation along the banks of the river that flows through have been cut down. This causes destructive floods within the area. In the community where you live, all the forest vegetation along the banks of the river that flows through have been cut down. This causes destructive floods within the area. First of all, identify the problem. What advice can you give to, the, to your community head to solve this problem? Let us take a concrete example. In your surrounding, if the stream around your community witnesses deforestation along the streams and that all the vegetation has been removed there, what are you going to notice? What is the problem seen? Also, how therefore can you advise the people of your community to solve this problem, most especially your quarter head or the mayor or the main stakeholder of your community? Let us introduce our lesson. Drainage basins do have different storm hydrographs and lag times. Drainage basins do have different storm hydrographs and lag time. This is simply because different areas in the world witness different types of rainfalls and different types of areas in terms of land surfaces. Therefore, the storm hydrographs and the lag time for each area will be according to the type of environment in which we have the precipitation and record the storm hydrograph. Also, this implies variations in the shape of the hydrographs or in the lag time. It also implies variations in the shape of hydrographs or in lag time. Due to the different areas, we obviously therefore have different storm hydrographs and different lag times. The factors that affect them therefore can be grouped into two. These factors are the static or catchment factors and on the other hand we have the second types which are the dynamic factors. The factors affecting the shape of storm hydrographs and lag time. The factors operating over space and time are the dynamic factors and the static or catchment factors. The dynamic factors are the factors that engulf a specific drainage basin and that can change. Whereas the static or the catchment factors are the factors that do not change and do not move in a particular drainage basin. We shall see them. So these static factors, these are the characteristics of a drainage basin. That is how a drainage basin looks like in terms of its characteristics. And these static or catchment factors therefore include the basin slope or gradient, the basin size and shape, the basin's geology, the vegetation cover, the drainage density. That is, we have among these factors, the basin slope or gradient, how the slope looks like, the basin size and shape, that is how big or large the drainage basin is, the basin's geology, that is how the rocks cover the area and also how the soil looks like in the area and the, the vegetation cover, that is the plant cover, do we have enough vegetation or not? And lastly, the drainage density, which simply refers to the number of streams we have in a particular drainage basin. 
The drainage bays, the basin slope or gradient. Steep slope reflect greater gravitational force leading to high runoff and less storages. It reduces lag time forming sharp peaks, otherwise known as flashy peaks. Here it is due to the fact that the steepness of the, na of the nature of the land does not permit water to be stored easily. Therefore, water flows more rapidly, giving rise to rapid peaks or sharp peaks, which are also known as the flashy storm hydrograph. Whereas on the other hand, we have the gentle slopes. The gentle slopes experience high rates of infiltration, which delays the transfer of water to the channels. Remember, when the drainage basin has a slope which is gentle, that is, it does not high rise <coughs> steeply, it gives rise to a type of subdued storm hydrograph which is due to the fact that infiltration is high because the slope is not steep. <clears throat> Let us pay attention to the role of the gradient on the storm hydrograph. As we can see here, we have the discharge which shows the quantity of water in millimeters and the time taken. The steep slopes will give rise to a steep peak, that is the rapid rise giving rise to a flashy type of storm hydrograph because the river flows faster due to more accumulation of water from the slope and it giving rise to a short lag time whereas the gentle slope will give rise to a subdued type of a subdued type of storm hydrograph as you can see on this green line here which is due to a high level of infiltration because the water does not flow rapidly but instead flows gently. Number two, the basin size and shape. The size. Large catchment areas produce gentle, gently rising hydrographs and extended lag time. It develops large sources of runoff leading to an increase in the discharge within a short period of time. La large catchments areas will produce gently rising hydrographs and extended lag time. We take an example of the subdued hydrograph and which will therefore develop large sources of runoff leading to an increase in the discharge within a short period of time. Let us pay attention to the graph explaining the size of the drainage basin. Here we have the small size of a drainage basin. This small size will give rise to a short period of time here, in, therefore leading to a rapid increase in what? In the amount of rainfall developing a type of rapid peak or a flashy peak whereas a larger area in terms of size would develop a, a higher peak but in main relation with time wherein it also have a larger or a longer lag time in the area. The basin size and shape therefore can be explained under the shape also. When we have a circular shape of a drainage basin, the circular shape basins are associated with sharp peak hydrographs. Distance of flow to discharge is equal in all directions. Consequently, water will arrive from all sources at roughly the same time. Here we are trying to explain the fact that secular drainage basins will have streams that will discharge their water into the mainstream at the same period of time in terms of the lag time and therefore since they all arrive at the same time the water here will arrive forming in another type forming a sharp peak leading to the flashy hydrograph 
Whereas, on the other hand, where we have elongated basins, the arrival of water will be much more staggered and dispersed. What are we seeing? We are seeing that due to the fact that it is coming from different directions, but it is elongated, it will disperse the energy of the flow of the streams before getting into the main river. Let us see this in its graph. Here we have the graph of the elongated type of basin. In this type of drainage basin, we can see here in the graph that we have a steady rise and steady fall in the limbs of the storm hydrograph, which is similar to the subdued hydrograph. Whereas in the circular type of drainage basin, the effects are different on the storm hydrograph. It gives rise to a steep peak which gives rise to a flashy storm hydrograph with rapid rising limbs by our left side here and another recession limb here which is slowly but surely going down. The next step or the next factor is the basin's geology. We notice that impermeable soils such as clay, soils and impermeable rocks give rise to sharp peaks hydrographs and shorter lag time areas containing a lot of impermeable soils will therefore limit the amount of water that will infiltrate the soils into ground and underground storages example the clay soils as we rightly said other rocks like strong basaltic rocks will also reduce infiltration Whereas, on the other hand, permeable rocks or porous soils and rocks, porous rocks will allow more water to pass through them. A good example of such rocks are limestone rocks, which are sedimentary rocks, of course, which have that capacity to absorb water and permit water to pass through them, thereby having a higher infiltration rate and reducing runoff because there will be less water to overflow the land into the various streams and channels, thereby increasing infiltration. This type will give therefore rise to a particular type of graph. Let us pay attention to this graph. The graph here, we have the impermeable layers or rocks in terms of geology and its soils. We explain that the clay soils, since they are impermeable with hard rocks like the basaltic rocks, will increase runoff because they reduce the amount of infiltration. This will give rise to sharp peaks and through the rapid rise of the peak, giving rise to the flashy type of storm hydrograph with another recession limb here that is faster with a related lag time. Whereas areas which have more softer rocks which are permeable such as the limestone would permit the water to infiltrate more giving rise to the subdued type of storm hydrograph which has a steady rising limb and a steady falling limb on the recession side <clears throat> with a relationship to its lack time. The vegetation cover on its own now, we can pay attention to the tropical rainforest region which is associated with long lag time and subdued peak hydrographs. This is due to interception of rainwater by canopies. We all know that in areas where we have a lot of forest vegetation like in the equatorial rainforest of the Cameroon type of vegetation, we see that here the high trees or the long trees form a canopy which have a high tendency of intercepting water and their roots and their roots also have increased pores that can increase the high level of infiltration. Whereas this can be seen with the roots that increase infiltration and reducing transfer into river channels and streams. Whereas 
the little vegetation or the no vegetation areas will reduce interception and increase runoff amounts. Example of the Sahel regions which have dry lands. In this area, rainfall will have a direct impact on the ground. And due to this, it generally flows directly through channels, through runoff and overland flow because there is a lack of vegetation that can permit interception and increase infiltration into the soils due to the absence of roots and pores in the soils caused by the presence of vegetation. The drainage density is the next factor. Number of streams in a particular drainage basin affect the shape of hydrographs and lag time. The number of streams in a particular drainage basin will affect the shape of hydrographs and lag time. Areas with a lot of streams will generally increase runoff and reduce infiltration. This gives rise to rapid uh, storm hydrographs. Whereas high drainage density therefore here will mean that it will correspond to faster response to storms. If we have high drainage density in an area, therefore the storms will be higher and if the storm is higher, it will lead to a rapid rise in the graph showing the rising limb of the storm, giving rise to flashy peaks or the or to giving rise to flashy storm hydrographs. But the less or scattered tributaries or streams in an area will produce a less rising limb with long lag time. For example, we can talk about the subdued storm hydrograph. It is subdued because it, it, it originates from the, 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 the less presence of the number of streams in an area. When you have less streams, therefore, the rising limb will be steady, rises steadily, flows steadily, and falls back in the recession limb steadily in accordance with the lag time, which will be longer. And it, remember, it will be shorter where streams are higher. The second type of factors, as we earlier said, are the dynamic factors or the transient factors. These factors are factors which are subject to frequent changes. That is, from one time to the other, they can change. They are not stagnant like the other factors. We have two main which are the climate. Hearing the climate, we pay attention to precipitation, most especially rainfall. And we shall look at how it affects the storm hydrograph through its duration. Intensity, it, through its duration, intensity and the form. And secondly, we shall pay attention to land use or man's activities. That is how man uses his environment and it affects the storm hydrograph in terms of cutting down of trees, farming, and urbanization in an area. Let us go concretely to these factors. Climate, as we earlier said, or precipitation. The form, snow produces subdued peaks. Thor produces sharp peak. Rainstorm produces in tropics sharp peaks with less lag time. The snow will produce subdued peaks because when snow falls, we all know its form, it will take time to melt because it falls in a solid form and it is condensed. By the time it takes to melt, it will melt slowly, giving rise to an accumulation that flows slowly and giving a slowly rising limb which continues to fall on the recession limb also. On the other hand, 
the sharp peaks in the tropics are sharp due to the fact that we have thunderstorms and high rainfalls that come in with high amounts. These amounts in millimeters, therefore, increase generally the amount of runoff and overland flow, reducing infiltration. And when infiltration is reduced, the water is being channeled into the main discharge through the streams and rivers faster, giving rise to a less lag time and a sharper peak, which is generally the flashy peak. In terms of intensity, high intensity generates high runoff, less lag time and sharp peaks. High intensity will generate high runoff, less lag time and sharp peak. What do we mean by this? The more the rainfall is falling with more energy and power, it will reduce the quantity of infiltration and flow easily and rapidly on the surface of land. This will increase the runoff and overland flow using less lag time to increase and show a rapid rise of the limb when it comes to the storm hydrograph. This will give rise to sharp peaks such as the flashy peak which has a rapid rising limb on one side and a rapid falling or recession limb on the other side. The duration. Duration on its own, long, the duration on its own will show long precipitation. When precipitation is longer, more water will result in subdued peaks. That is, if rainfall is falling for a longer period of time, it will accumulate water slowly but surely, giving rise to a steady rise, which does not go up rapidly, but moves steadily and start refalling back in the recession limb, giving rise to the subdued limb as said earlier with a subdued peak. The second activities here are the man's activities or land use. Man uses his land in various forms in order to generate income and go through his day-to-day -day activities. Some of these are deforestation. Man cuts down the trees alongside the, his environment in order to develop his, his houses through construction, in order to burn firewood for cooking and also to use to ameliorate his environment. Therefore, if we may ask, how do you think this activity can disrupt the community in which you live? And what advice can you give to your community head to solve the problem that can, call, that can be caused due to deforestation? For this to be done, solutions such as tree planting are very important and the reduction of tree cutting. This can be done through reforestation and afforestation and the creation also of forest reserves in order to conserve the, in order to conserve the, the area and increase the amount of infiltration of water after rainfall, which will in turn reduce runoff and overland flow that turns to create floods and change the peaks of the storm hydrograph. Farming activities also should be encouraged because the more we cultivate and till the soil, it creates spores in the soil which easily permit water to infiltrate after rain, rainfall. Due to this, it will reduce the runoff activities and overland flow into streams and rivers that can in turn increase discharge and lead to the problems faced such as flooding. Lastly, urban and rural areas also have a particular role to play. It is seen in urban areas that due to the tarring and the cementing of gutters and roads 
in urban areas, after rainfall, we have higher amounts of runoff and overland flow in these areas, which in turn increases the discharge in the main river, with creating, thereby creating a sharper peak, like the flashy peak, with rising steep peaks, with another short, with another recession limb that is also faster. Whereas in rural areas where cultivation is conserved and the cultures are conserved, people tend to practice normal farming activities without having their gutters being tarred or their roads being tarred and their gutters being cemented. They witness more infiltration than the urban people simply because they are still engaged in agricultural activities such as farming and cultivation which creates more pores in the soils, thereby increasing infiltration and reducing runoff, which is good also for the type of storm hydrograph that it will produce, such as the subdued storm hydrograph. Dam constructions also in areas where we have dams, when the dam is filled or it overflows, it can lead to floods. But we can solve this problem by opening dam ways to reduce the quantity or the volume of water in dams in order to reduce the flooding in the areas. Whereas if it is not done, the dams will produce more water that will develop a rapid storm hydrograph such as the flashy peak hydrograph through a rapid rise of its limbs, both on the rising limb and the recession limb. Summarily, the factors affecting storm hydrograph and lag time are the static and catchment factors, which are the permanent factors and relate to characteristics of drainage. These are basin slope or gradient, basin size and shape, basin geology, basin vegetation cover, and the drainage density. We repeat again the basin slope or gradient, basin geology, vegetation cover, and drainage density. The dynamic factors or transient factors on their own are subject to frequent changes. These are the changes fall within the factors of climate, most especially precipitation that changes regularly from one place to another, and the land use through the man's activities of deforestation, urbanization, and farming. Let us take some few exercises to see how we have understood, some few exercises to see how we've understood our lesson today. Differentiate between static and dynamic factors that affect the storm hydrograph. Differentiate between static and dynamic factors that affect the storm hydrograph. Correction. Static are permanent factors that relate to the characteristics of the drainage basin, while dynamic factors are subject to frequent changes. Question number two. Explain three ways through which man influences the shape of the hydrograph. Correction. Def through deforestation, urbanization, and famine. Our take-home assignment is, what do you understand by river regimes? What do you understand by river regimes? Our references are Garrett Nagel, 2000, Advanced Geography, Oxford University Press. Secondly, Changvi Sebastian Kangal, 2020, Complete Physical Geography and Contemporary Environmental Issues for Advanced Learners. Grassroots Publishers, Yaoundé. Thanks. Our next lesson, see you during the next lesson, which is River Regimes or re Regimes of Runoff. <laughs>
Unatege minga matege nyum Unatege majang matege ndom Manetambia ninyane njubia yen Ngani bana matege mut Ngani lakiri watege ndong Yeso kinambia jinkido Manetambia ninyane njubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane njubia yen 